Hi, welcome back to the garden. Um, I want to do a special shout out again and a thank you to Dorothy Morgan for coming to visit us yesterday and to, uh, which would have been the 2nd of February, uh, to give us an explanation, sort of a deeper look at different ways to use astrology. I know a lot of people, they get that big wheel and they see all those planets. It gets very confusing. But, and I also hope you will take her up on her kind offer to contact her She will, with, with your birth date and time if you have it, and she will send you a free chart. She's not interpreting. She's just sending you a chart to give you a place to start so you can begin to start to follow astrology for yourself. And today I'm going to talk about platonic solids. So y'all can turn this off if it's really going to bore you, but it's not a boring subject. Platonic solids are five shapes that uh, Plato, that's why they're called platonic solids, he defined as the elemental shapes that existed within nature that were perfect. And what a platonic, they're five geometric shapes. They're solids. In other words, they're not like the little things you used to see when you're in school, the little charts like the triangles and things. They're based on those shapes, but they're solids. And they all have each, they're like a die. Each side, if there's four sides, all four are equal. That's what they are. And there are five of them, and we will go over what they are. And they're called, when they're not being called solid geometry uh, shapes, geometric shapes, they're called polyhedra, which just means many-sided. And the five shapes, all of the faces on each one of these is identical. And I'm going to go through them from the, the two ones, you know, this is, this is called a tetrahedron. And it looks a lot like a pyramid because pyramids are tetrahedrons. Um, and symbolically in, I'm going to use this hand because it's got more space. This is the symbol for fire, in, and it, it was associated with fire in solid geometry, in the sacred geometry realm. The next one is the cube, the cube like an ice cube, but all very regular, each side regular. The cube is earth. When you see it, you'll see it portrayed as earth, and I'll explain how they use that in some spiritual practices. The octahedron, which is my little favorite guy. He's the one that looks like a little diamond shape. He's got eight sides and he represented represents air, has been known to. And the dodecahedron, which is this one, it's 12 sided. And the dodecahedron uh, symbolized the universe. It also symbolized in their time, it has 12 sides, so it represents the 12 signs, the zodiac, um, and that whole system. And then this is one that uh, also the dodecahedron, if you've ever read anything about ley lines, which are supposedly, well, they're not supposedly, they're energetic lines that run around the earth. It's like the Earth's a giant dodecahedron and the ley lines run in between the different shapes. So that's kind of an interesting thing to look at. If you ever want to look at ley lines, they're kind of fun. And the iso I, I actually had to get the Google thing out to find this out. This is a 20-sided thing. It's called the Acosahedron. Ah, oh, I did. Okay. Acosahedron. And it's 20 sided. And it means water. And uh, it's, those are sort of the basic five shapes. If anyone talks, you run across any reference to platonic solids, that's what they're talking about. Now, platonic solids have a strong element in the um, spiritual traditions. And especially if you look at a, a mandala, 
There's always a square at the middle and that represents the earth. And then these other shapes are used in the building the regular forms around a mandala, it's M-A-N-D-A-L-A. -A. And um, they circle it throughout with the other platonic shapes and it tells a bit of a story if you know how to read them. Then in sacred geometry, the, these five shapes are the ones that, uh, they're archetypal, original, and universal patterns. They're symmetric, and they seek balance. And so it's kind of like compared, like, you try to find balance in music, you try to find balance in symmetry. And when I build a grid, depending on how I see what's, what the energy is around the situation, if the energy is to combine, to have harmony, to bring things together, they'll normally be an even number. And if it's to start something, to initiate something, to move something forward, it will be an odd number. Um, and we just went through all that with the numbers that I just finished doing. Uh, it's And people say, okay, what about the circle? Well, the way the ancients looked at the globe, the circle, the sphere, is that it was um, the sacred geometry. It was like one of those so blown up that you can't see all the little lines, but they really considered that they're there. That's like I said, on the earth, they say that the ley lines follow the uh, dodecahedron model. Um, and in people say, well, are they on are these shapes in nature? Well, my favorite crystal is a fluorite. This has not been cut. This is how this tumbled out of the mountain and it's an octahedron. Um, there are other crystalline shapes that uh, there's a way actually of classifying crystals by using the different uh, crystal shapes that are in them. And that also brings me to somebody said to me, what's the difference between a stone and a crystal? Well, I call them all stones at various times, but a crystal has a very regular structure inside. Its atomic structure is regular enough to make it come out like this, you know, and and the more minerals and things get mixed into it, the less likely it is to come out in this kind of a pure shape. Um, a stone tends to be a, an amalgamate of a lot of different minerals, and um, it doesn't have that intense, intensely structured crystalline structure. So that's kind of the difference between a stone stone and a crystal. So. This is kind of a short thing tonight, but you know I don't really want to drag you through any more geometry than you've already seen. Um, of course, you've seen the geometric shapes in two dimensions, which is the triangle, the square, the rectangle, the pentagon, um, all those shapes. They're all out there in their different forms. But this is when you get into sacred geometry and the platonic shapes and how they viewed that we, I will never get used to the fact, this isn't, you understand, this is like a mirror effect. So what I think is on my right is now on my left. So it's like looking into a mirror. It's very confusing. Anyway, not any more confused than you probably already are about platonic shapes. But I just wanted to mention it because occasionally I'll run into it when I'm researching something. And when I didn't know what platonic shapes were, I was like, I would kind of skip over that paragraph, but it really gives you a greater understanding and more meaning to understand the symbols that we see and how things are grouped together. And that if we see them as being symmetric and one half being just like the other or up and down being even, or the asymmetric where you have odd numbers like five and seven and nine, a nine can is actually works a little better because it's three triads, but they, because they're not symmetric, they kind of make you have to work harder at seeing what's there or they're moving you forward. They're bringing about change. The even numbered and even sided things tend to 
deal, give you sense of greater harmony and more stability. So anyway, that's kind of a look at that today. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at desert roses and other sorts of bizarre stones that come out of the desert. I have some fun stuff to show you tomorrow. So anyway, see you then. Once again, I'll like, subscribe, and share. And I will have below how to get in touch with New Hampshire astrologer Dorothy Morgan. And we really, really want to thank her for having come on the show. Thank you so much. Bye.